Today I want to talk about one of the most important decisions a founder has to make and it's right at the very beginning of any kind of business. And that is do they want control or do they want to become rich? And those are the two choices there. If they want control, they're going to generally go it alone. They want 100% of control of the business. They're generally going to have to bootstrap that business. And they're going to they understand that they're going to kind of grow a little bit more slowly. If they want to get rich, generally it means that they're going to bring in co-founders or partners and investors. They're going to be able to share control. That's where they're going to get some funding help. And they really want to grow fast. This is what's known as the founder's dilemma. So if if control is at paramount right here, what, we, what I discover is that a lot of people People feel, or when they want to start these businesses, have what I want to call the overconfidence bias. They would, they think they know it all, kind of going in. I know we've talked a little bit about this in previous videos. They want to be king of their business as opposed to being rich. What they see is they, they want to see how other people are going to perceive them. They want to go out into the public and call themselves the president and CEO of a company that they built. They make it very clear that this is my idea, this is my baby, and they're very much emotionally attached to the actual business. Funding uh, of those types of businesses generally comes from some type of a debt financing. Generally, the first choice is, uh, you know, bootstrapping it yourself. But if you can't do that, then it's getting a loan from friends and family. This generally is equated to what I call dumb money, uh, basically that uh, doesn't come with any any connections or anything like that. It's, a, it's more of a debt financing vehicle. And oftentimes when it comes from friends and family, you get a lot of bad advice that also comes along with the money because if friends and family members say, listen, you're using some of my money here. Here's, here's some of my ideas about the business, even though they don't have a technical role in the particular business. Other sources of funding for those types of, uh, of businesses is uh, maybe a reward-based crowdfunding campaign. Again, the, the founder of that particular business maintains 100% control. It's their baby to kind of go forward. Uh, they really are focusing on more of a debt finding, which is almost impossible to get for startup businesses. But that's what they want because they don't want to give up any control of the business because that's, that's the important factor. The other part of that is I want to get rich. Uh, this is where the Silicon Valley uh, permeates uh, our, our thinking around businesses. Uh, people see extreme potential in their business idea versus maybe a moderate uh, potential of their particular business. They certainly value becoming rich over any kind of control that they have. That's, what they, that's how they measure their success is how wealthy they can actually become. They, they recognize that in that scenario there, they're going to be sharing control with co-founders, partners, and investors, those kinds of things. Any kind of funding from friends and family is usually some equity-based type of thing. In other words, friends and family actually own an equity stake in the particular uh, business. Uh, or, or, like I said, a partner it becomes equity in that particular business or, or an investor. Um, but one of the things that most, uh, most of these want to get rich types of founders don't necessarily realize is that the founder of these really high growth companies will rarely ever become the CEO in the future. Many of them see stories about Elon Musk and Zuckerberg and, and you know, Bill Gates and those kind of things. And, and so they say, oh, that's really what I want. I know they became very rich all because they founded a company and they moved up. That's what I want to go ahead and do. Um, unfortunately, as soon as investors start to see uh, some success with a business model, they all challenge that founder's uh, leadership. Um, and they really want to put a farmer in there. And what it really does take is a, is a hunter to start, start those kinds of things. So uh, <clears throat> this is kind of a little bit of a, 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 what we call the founder's dilemma that we all have to face when we start that, that business uh, for the first time. I hope this was a, 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 a nugget of information for you. If you found it useful, be sure to check out Steve Bisblog for more information on small businesses.